Greetings. Akesh. Yes. Hey, Lontano here. Hello. Welcome to the group. Nice, Thank you. Nice that you visited. Thank you. You're doing it much earlier today. Yes, that was an intention. Some people are kind of early birds. Yes, there is light outside. How is everything? Things are fine. Thank you, Max. How are your celebrations? I haven't had one in two days. <laughs> okay. What was the last one? Two days ago. What, what, what was that? What was it about? It was a friend of mine who had graduated from his in intellectual process. So. Congratulations to him as well. Who, yes. who do you have nearby? Pardon me? Who do you have nearby, near to you? Just my significant person. Say uh, hi to her. She is listening. Very good. Very good. So, I, what I see when I come down here all the time is a greater showing of light among you. I see that you have taken advice from many of the species and many, and even from myself, that you're knitting yourself together in a, in a very good way. In fact, I see groups of people coming together now. You know, the uh, areas of communication are opening greater. There are pockets like this all over the world. And these are the kinds of pockets that will be leadership positions because you're farther ahead. Do you understand that? Yeah. 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 There are very dark pockets in the earth as well where no light shines, where no hope exists. This is where we come in as species, humans, light. Together we form light. We must move out. It is time for us to become more than what we are. Do you understand? Yes. If you are encountered by the darkness, I believe De Coeur touched on this the other night. And I was listening, and it inspired me to tell you more about it. Because the light within you spreads out. Do you understand that? Mm -hmm. And if you, your light is trying to be extinguished by darkness, and your body is sacrificed, do you realize that that actually releases a hundredfold more time light than had been released in the world before because the sacrifice was pure? However, I am not looking to see any of you have this happen. <laughs> that is not what I'm speaking of. But I am telling you that when goodness is sacrificed to help those come up in through the light, their light increases a hundredfold. Your light increases whenever you help someone else that is groping in the darkness, shall we say? Is that a call? Does that make sense to you? Yeah. Yeah. These people would have nothing to do with the light in this sense. But yet, if you cannot remain silent whenever they are there. If they approach you and speak to you, you must show them that you are willing to speak to them and come to them. It is much like your old book, the Bible, or the Quran, or the Bhagavad Gita. They shed light. These old forms of writing that you look at for inspiration and to connect yourself to God have much, much truth. But, if you look at them with the wrong state of mind, you will get nothing out of them. If you look at them as just words and, and just stories, you will get nothing from that. But, if you look at them for inspiration, 
you can find it. Because it is hidden in the words, you see. The light comes out of the words when there's light going into the words. It reflects back to you. Does that make sense to you? If you look at it with light, you will find light. If you look at it with darkness, you will find darkness. It is the way of the world. It is the way of the universe. You get back what you send. Does that make sense? Thank you. Yes. Thank you. You're welcome. Was I about ready to have a mishap? <laughs> yeah. Well, then, thank you very much. <laughs> so. But I will say to you now that we have been watching this particular group that comes in and out of here. The power here, the energy here, is increasing. Can you be a witness to that? Yes. Yes. Oh, yes. <laughs> yes. Oh, yes. And the energy that you find at your Reiki share is increasing as well. As well as knitting together far places in considering to you, they are coming to you. Did you notice that? People are attracted to the light. Even those that with doubt. You saw the people walking by at the YMCA and looking in and saying, what's going on here? What is? What is happening? What is happening? What event is this? It was a match showcase. And they saw, what did they see? They saw people being helped. They saw people being a light. They heard wonderful conversation, and what does that do that attracts them to you, attracts them to you. And that's what we need to do, we as a group, even me, continuing to attract people to ourselves so that we can share the light, because eventually they will have to ask. They will have to ask what it is about you, or what it is about this group, that makes them attracted to you. Does that make sense? And when you talk amongst yourselves, do not be silent, quiet, Speak loudly and proudly. Others may hear. They may disagree. But they see how proud you are and how happy you are and what light they, you shed. And this may spark something within them. I know for my planet, when this era came about for us, enlightenment beyond what we had had before, it sparked many doubts. It sparked many people to question. But you know, questioning is a good thing. A very good thing. Because once you question, then you find. Once you seek, then you find. Without the search, the light does not just fall on you. But you must seek it. Right now, well, that was sort of incorrect. The light does fall on you, but not in the same way as if you seek it. Does that make sense? You, you can be in the light, but not be aware until you open your eyes and say, Ah, I have been taking the light for granted. <laughs> but yet, with you here, I can tell you that you have searched, you have looked, and there is light, and you can find it everywhere. You can also find darkness everywhere, but when you seek the light, the light finds you. And that light comes into you and out. And I think Tika used the word beacon. Beacon 
is what you must be. You must be a beacon because you cannot hide your light. The light within you. There was a verse in the Bible, do not hide your light under a bushel, I believe it says. This is the same concept. This is the same beauty of the light. For if you hide your light, how are you going to draw people in? How are you going to save the ship on, that is out at sea? You cannot see the light. Unless you become the beacon. The beacon will come to you. The, pe the ship will come to you because you are a safe harbor, right? Yes. Right. So you are the beacon. Do not hide that. Be proud of your light. Be proud of who you are and your accomplishments. Bring each other up with that. Learn more. Talk to each other. Net together. And I see the netting is coming together now. More. This group is coming and joining with that group. This troop is coming and joining with that group. Soon it will be a large community. It's a beautiful thing. I see it happening and that's why I bring it to you. I bring it to you because I've seen it happening right here in this area. And I, I am very proud of you. I'm very proud. That is all I have to say. If there is any questions, please ask. Can you, can you give us any uh, poetry, psalms, uh, proverbs, especially the ones you teach to your children, which would be very representative of your culture, or maybe of the th of the ideas you tried to you you t you taught us just now. What we teach our children is that uh, is that what I'm gathering? Some poetry, something condensed, maybe your poetry, even your poetry on that topic. Oh, we tried that once. It was great. Oh, well, let me see what I have here. Very good. Um, but what we teach our children about the light is, by example, for many, for the most part. I'm asking about poetry and or we do, something formal. And we do have books such as your Bible and Bhagavad Gita and Quran. Can you read from there? Um, and we do teach that to our children. We can, I can give you some passages. Excellent, you know, thank like you. like to hear something. I do not have that readily available by my side. But I, I do have some, there are some things that are memorable. Mm -hmm. Okay. Let me stop for a moment and think. <laughs> You're calling on something that I haven't done for a little while, so. Bear with me. Oh, okay. The center of light is in the heart, and the heart is the center of light. Let us become one with ourselves, because if we become scattered, how can we then pull that together without Problems. I'm using the word problems, but we have a different word. The entire sky fills with clouds now, and you cannot see the stars. So how do you get rid of the clouds so you can see the stars? You must let it rain first, mm -hmm. and then the sky will open. How's that? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Very good. Anything else? Uh, anything for children? What, do you have poetry for children? Poetry for children. Well, there is poetry for children. I don't read it often. Can you ask your mate? Maybe she remembers something. Okay, let me see. She has had many children, yes. Momentarily. Let her tell me what she wants to say.
One of the things that she's told me that they teach the children is that we do have trees and plants and things of that nature just as you do. I'm going to preface this a little bit. We have water and land and seas and fishes as, well, they don't look quite like yours, but they are aquatic. But she tells the children, or they teach the children, when you're in the water, do you become part of the water? Not necessarily. When you're in a picture with trees and plants and flowers, do you become part of the scenery? No. And yes. So what does that tell you? What is it like to be one with something else? Okay? We're teaching them that their individuality is important to every aspect of what they do. So that they're, when they grow, they are part of the picture, but yet they're individually separated from the picture. They are part of the water, but they are removed from the water. They are in the light and part of the light, but yet it's their individual light. Is that? Very good. It wasn't poetry, but it was a nice teaching. Everybody prepare your questions. I have the last question. Uh, so the story about the rain, what was the source of that? What was the source of what? You just read a poem about rain. What was that? Oh, where was it from? Yeah. It was from one of our ancient writings. Uh -huh. Do you have yes. common gods with us? Yes. Which ones? The one God. Okay, any more? The one God who is many and one, and we are many and one. We, he reaches out to us in many forms mm -hmm. and is in everything. And we are in everything, and we, and it's the sharing of the oneness and the manyness. Thank you. Do you have common prophets with us? Prophets? No, we do not have the common prophets, but we know of your prophets. Mm -hmm. We do have ancient prophets and modern prophets as well. One thing about your society that we've noted is that up to a point. No prophet after that has been recognized. But there's many. You have many prophets among you. But up to a point of your New Testament, after that there's no more prophets. We wonder what happened to them in your writings. But we understand now from the telepathic humans that this was an era that was written about that you still believe in prophets, but you don't recognize them the same. The Catholic uh, Church uh, says saint is like a prophet, but not necessarily. That's a confusion for us. We have John Lennon, Casey, Einstein. But you don't call them prophets? I do. You do? <laughs> but I mean they are not known as prophets? Not mainstream, yes. I don't ever hear anyone say, the prophet John Lennon. I don't hear that. Mm. Whereas you hear, the prophet Isaiah, the prophet Micah. You see what I'm saying? We do have prophets, yes. And they are among us. And they are separated and integrated. Because we must hear what they have to say all the time. So they are special people with special light. And they are recognized at birth. Can you just give a little blurb of your favorite prophet? Just describe them, the name, what they teach about. Um, Ventira. Uh -huh. She prophesied that our race 
and beings would come to a higher understanding when we understood ourselves. This sounds very simple, doesn't lie. It sounds very, very simple. But if you think about it, it's a very, very complex thing to understand who you really are. And when we finally did learn who we were as a community, not as necessarily all individuals, but yet that's part of it. But when you learn who you are, you become part of the community. And the community becomes part of you. And so her prophecy about understanding who we were as blues became a topic of conversation everywhere until she said something else. And this is what she said. While you're coming to understand yourself, don't ignore your friends. Don't ignore the light. Don't ignore who you want to be. Bring it all into you. Process it. And then let the light sift through it. Because then you will find the truth. Does that make sense to you? It's beautiful, thank you. You gave me goosebumps. It's beautiful. Everybody, no questions? Isabel, you're first. <clears throat> what do you want me to do? Ask questions. Oh. I, I see that there is some peacefulness going on right here. <laughs> that is good. But if you have questions, I will entertain them. That's fine. Be not afraid. <clears throat> are you living in a three-dimensional duality as we are, or are you in a fourth or fifth or higher? We started in third dimension. However, after a time, we realized that the fourth dimension was much more appropriate for us to live in as we grew. So we have moved from the third dimension to the fourth. You can go back to a third dimensional life if you would like, yes. In that sense, we have duality. Because there are those that have not moved to fourth dimension. They remain in the third dimension, but we can still communicate. We have that ability. When you can live in the fourth dimension, you can live in the third dimension. You can communicate between the two. And there are reasons for those who want to still live in third dimension. They feel it's more appropriate for who they are. Do you understand that? They might be people that work their intellectual thoughts on a realm that is more solid. Fourth dimension tends to have its um, light-heartedness as far as move, movement. They prefer to be actual actually in the moment. We can actually be out of the moment. Does that make sense to you? Mm -hmm. They prefer to be a study in, in that time. I'm, I'm not sure how I to explain it any further. I think you need to define duality. I think even God would have duality. Duality is, is more than one. <laughs> so, as, as far as I'm concerned. Third dimension to fourth dimension, that's two different dimensions, that's dual. So, Do you have negativity in fourth dimension? Pardon me? Negativity, suffering in fourth dimension. Negativity? Yes, negativity and suffering. There is some, but it lasts a short time because we have conquered many of the things that cause people to suffer. That doesn't mean that they can come on without us knowing it. Some people are more isolated than others and they can get in trouble when they have little contact with another telepath. Because if we are in contact with them, we can 
know if there's mental problems. Mm -hmm. Do you understand that? Mm -hmm. But if they are isolated, we don't always speak to them telepathically, and therefore we do not know their problems. So, but their illnesses can be treated easily. Mental problems, a little more difficult, but they can be treated. But you see, with mental problems, sometimes the lack of reality can, help, can be a problem. But we do have certain chemicals, drugs as you might call them, that would help them to understand what they're going through and bring them into a closer alignment with reality. Not that it always works, but it does in many, many cases. You have suicides. We have not had a suicide in many years. There are suicides. We know of suicides. Not like your planet. Not like your planet. How about if, somebody is, if somebody is sensed to have that inclination, then there is therapy for that. And we bring them back into the community. You see, those who are not in the community are the only ones that are suicidal. They are outside the community. Do you understand that? They are isolated. So we must bring them into the community and then they understand. They are loved. They are understood. They have purpose. They can move forward with us. And the sense of suicide the loss of their own life becomes secondary and finally non-existent. Look at police. 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 There are those that aspire to become officials of governing peace. Yes. In that sense, yes. They govern the peace with their ideal ideals. Let me put it that way. Does How that does sense? one become into the fourth dimension? The fourth dimension is, it exists uh, without us coming into it. But we have learned that there is a way to get into the fourth dimension. We have had our evolutions where our mind is more closely related to a, a higher dimension. Does that make sense to you? Okay. And then, after discovering what it is, you integrate it. Okay. Does that make sense to you? Yeah. Why would one go back then? One just... Personal, personal preference. Okay. Now, when you were saying the community brings those that are having trouble, suicidal, are they basically third dimension? Because I would imagine suicide would not be in fourth dimension. You are correct. Fourth dimension has no suicides. It is the third dimension that sometimes can become isolated. Their telepathy is less. That it's is less. Correct. They have yes. some, but it's That's less. less. Okay. And so that is a very good point that you bring up. Because their less telepathy can actually bring them to a point where they feel like they're not part of. Right. And that is where it has to be discovered. We, we actually reach out to the third dimension periodically. I was just going to say, is there some way the fourth dimension can... Our peacekeeper, police... Got it. Okay. Actually are charged with taking care of situations in the third dimension. So, and making it aware to them that they will be visited or at least looked on at least once or twice in our period of thoughts and time. Because of our free will... You can turn that back on. The beginnings of some civilizations where hybridization began were pure alien. Does that make sense? And they, and actually human life is alien. So 
It came from elsewhere. Yeah. And yeah. you were seeded here. Yeah. Do you understand that? Yeah. So mm -hmm. being a hybrid is not especially rare. However, you became your own species. In interbreeding and gathering the terra, the information from the earth, from your mother earth, made you a human. Okay? Your, your surroundings, your integrations, you became totally different than any species ever know. Does that make sense to you? Mm -hmm. It just confirms. <laughs> ah. She thinks told that about so. me quite often. So. Told you so, told you so. Okay, uh, <laughs> but um, your integration with the seeding made you totally different than any other species. So, and your planet, the way it is, the way it moves, the way it interacts with the other planets, believe it or not, that has something to do with how you are as a species. Your interaction in the universe as a planet, around the sun, and when the planet that is now known as your asteroid belt exploded, that changed things as well. So, yes. But there has been hybridization happening after this, after the fact, in this modern age, because it is this modern age, and they would like to see what they can enhance. Pause again. Channeling-like process. Mm. They come into the body, <clears throat> and they uh, form a protective barrier around the egg, and then they take that and they move it to the another dimension. Would I have any? But they have changed their policies on how they do things now because they used to abduct, as you know, and they do not do that anymore. They used to do many things without permission. Mm. But now they at least search the mind to find out if this would be agreeable with the individual. They may not ask permission with everything, but they will find out your disposition on and thoughts about it. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Excuse me. Okay, I'm back. Oh, thank you. I need replenished. Oh, so you drank something? So, I'm not sure if that would be the appropriate term, but yes, I did Im imbibe something. Any more questions? There was somebody else that wants to come through, but I do not know if they will. Go ahead. I would like to know where my children are and the one I... You can leave it off if you like. All right. It's not important to me. The best part is gone. <laughs> um, what are the news in the colonies? Ah, the colonies. Nina is very busy. Mm -hmm. Wait a minute. I would like to speak to her for one minute. All right. To see if she would like to come. Okay.